Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another very casual and probably inconsistent uh, vlog about uh, things like uh, today. Um, continuing on from uh, the uploads I've done about the Elmar lenses, I thought we'd move on and have a look at the first uh, F2 lens that lights produced. And it's uh, none other than the uh, quite well-known and slightly maybe controversial uh, Light Sumar or Sumar. Um, this one I bought, you've seen it before, but uh, I bought this one off eBay and it's one of my better eBay purchases because the lens is in really nice condition and this looks very much like an original lights lens cap too so uh let's just take it off uh, actually let, let's just lock it into position that's what it looks like when it's mounted uh, to a screw thread Leica in this case um my 1940 uh 3c so without further ado let's just take it off and have a have a closer look at it. The lens was produced between um, 1932 and 1939 or thereabouts, although I've read slightly conflicting uh, figures on that one. Um, incidentally, most of the information I've got here has come from uh, one of the Ken Rockwell websites. Again, I'm going to make it quite clear that I am no expert on these uh, lenses and everything I'm going to tell you, it, it's what I've picked up and off the web and, and you know, just done general research about. But what I'm going to do first is uh, go through the, uh, the technical bits, if you like, the bits that I've... Uh, I've come across on the uh, on the net as it were right so this was the first of the uh, fast lights lenses previous to that had been various versions of the f35 Elmar and uh, a good many people of course wouldn't uh, call f2 fast these days but uh, f2 is by no means slow and in, and uh, you know, I don't think we should we we should consider this even now to be a slow lens. I, I've got quite a few f2 lenses, um, and I, I I don't think they're slow by any means. But obviously, um, that's a, a matter of opinion. Anyway, um, according to Ken Rockwell, um, it's sharp in the centre and it softens to the edges. Um, and I think that's what a lot of lenses did back then. I've read somewhere as well that it's it, it, it works its best at f5.6. And um, also, I believe, and I've read this somewhere, but I can't remember where, that um, the, the leaves, if you were to sort of uh, look into the camera, the, when the... Um, the, the iris leaves actually when they're closed they, they actually on flat they form a slight dome whether that's right or not I don't know and if you know um, for certain that's the case then please uh, please let me know because as I've said I, I just like sort of chatting on about these and rambling on about things like uh, I don't claim to be an expert so if you know about it, that is the case then um, you know let's uh, let, let us know uh, so in other words, what I'm saying is that as the lens closes like that, the, as the iris closes like that, then the, the, the blades form a very slight sort of dome. Um, anyway, um, I can't remember where I read that now. I could have been the worst for drink. Perhaps I dreamt it. I don't know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> whatever. But um, the, the lens is uncoated, which uh, again isn't unusual for lenses of this age. Um, and if you are thinking of buying one and you want a hood, then the 
the official Leica one uh, is referred to as um, I think a SWMP or a SUMP. Leica had this odd habit of putting sort of codes and code letters on their various different uh, accessories and uh, you end up with these rather odd, odd words. It's uh, SWMP. Um, now the the lens has uh, six elements and it has a 48 degree angle of view and six blades so it's not going to be a, uh, a bulky monster or anything like that um, and it has apertures running from well f2 up to uh, f12.5 it's a non-click aperture so anybody who wants to use one for videography might find it useful and uh, it focuses down like I think all the Leica lenses of this period down to a meter is about the closest uh, focus or, or 39 inches um, it was an expensive lens when it was new like all lights lenses are and it's uh, manufactured from solid brass um, or nickel plated steel I'm assuming the nickel plated steel is just in parts like I think they were usually made in made from brass uh, and I believe and um, again these numbers can vary but in the seven years of production about 120,000 were made now that number may be incorrect so uh, as I as I've said you get various different bits of data off for websites like that for seven years actually I, I'm not convinced about that well I may have made a mistake there but because seven years production 120,000 does sound a lot but not you know it's not a lot by like a standard so that bit that, that may be worth researching further and again if you if you've got alternative figures um you know please let me know what i have done is i've printed off a few photos just onto a plain a4 paper a few minutes back so the ink's probably still wet of uh, the sort of pictures this this um, lens is capable of making as i've said this one is in it's in really nice clean condition and I suspect it may have been serviced at some time during its uh, during its life because it, it it really is a very very nice lens, and I'll collapse it. I mean the the only cosmetic faults I suppose if you could say is a little bit of the plate the chrome plating is coming off coming off there. I don't know whether you can get the get the uh, yeah can you see it just there. Um, just uh, along there revealing what looks like brass but you know a lens of this age so what so in in some respects I think this lens gets a little bit I don't like to use the word controversial but off the top of my head I can't think of a better one because some people they claim they these lenses glow now they're they're uncoated so they're going to flare so you expect some sort of slight uh flaring um but but the, 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 there does seem to be a slightly different quality to, to that flare and I'll, I'll explain why when light hits hits things it, it bounces off items doesn't it and it and it's um, you know it's difficult to explain here but this is an example of really what I mean now you can see this 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 is a photograph I took with the uh, Sumar um, it, obviously it's one of my collections standing next to a, a bottle of uh, wine I, I put the I put the bottle of wine there for no other reason that it's it looks quite interesting doesn't it I and um, it was just something to pose the camera against so 
and what I should have done was clean the heads on the printer first because just ignore these vertical lines here that's that's typical what the printer does when it's I should have cleaned the heads first but I've only literally just uh, decided to do this vlog on the last minute I've had the notes written for months because I wanted to research further and uh, I've just been a bit on the busy side so in the end I've, I've just used the original notes that I, that I made and I've literally decided that well it's Friday afternoon um, got the house to myself uh, so I'll do a vlog and I quickly printed these off and I should have done the head clean but just ignore these vertical lines there that, that just happens when I don't clean the heads uh, so now if you look at the now this table is it, like a light wood it's maple so the lights come through the window and it's sort of bounced off again and it's actually bounced off the uh, the um, side of the, uh, the, the the chair as well but it does I, I don't know it to me that is a glow but to other people it um, it's just produced by a, an uncoated lens I'm going to leave you to decide whether that's like a glow or not it's a very controversial subject in some respects because some people claim it's utter nonsense but other people say no that it, it, the sumar glows um you know I, i'm sort of sitting on the fence on this one at one point i was quite convinced yes they do and in some photographs you actually can see this um i suppose what you call the glow and it doesn't actually have to come off really light colored surfaces it, it just almost appears um at, at random times so I think maybe this one's probably a little bit of both. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on. And here's another photograph taken with the lens. This was taken, um, oh, I think not that long after I bought the lens. Um, I the one thing about doing it like this is we can sort of zoom in to to look at detail. And uh, this is off a. Um, as I said, this is this is a uh, printed off uh, A4 paper, so it's quite a big image, and I can sort of move about the uh, the area quite easily and point specific things out. It's not been taken that long ago though, because I'm just looking at the price of uh, of fuel. That's uh, in in Britain. Um, this is during the, uh, the that's one pound. 16.9 p so that was that was taken uh yeah taken uh a few years back before the uh price of fuel decided to go through the roof and uh amazingly has never returned despite the fact that uh fuel prices in, as far as barrels were concerned dropped but we won't go into any uh any politics but uh that just does give an idea of uh when this was taken uh Porth Madog actually on the high street um uh, facing towards the uh the cob and it, it's rather it's a very pleasant town is Porth Madog uh in uh in North Wales for those of you who uh, are viewing from from other countries and I'd also like to take this chance in uh, saying hello to um a few new members who uh new subscribers um, thank you for that and uh, please don't uh, hesitate to uh, make any comments about these uh, casual vlogs I do every now and then and here's another now this one does actually show up I think the, the potential performance of this lens because this this is um, a local uh, wood just over the border in South Staffordshire and there's a lot of branches, leaves and so on. And the, the camera has really um, picked out those details. And uh, I mean, this, this, this was not done on the proper photo printer. This is a, just a general purpose printer. And um, I think the, the results, the detail, the sharpness and so on is very, very, very acceptable. In fact, I'll come right in and you can see the you can see the detail in the foliage there and the uh, on the path as well and uh, I, th I think that's probably 
shows you goes a good way to showing you how how, how good this lens is. Um, it it it's not a, a, an incredible um, photograph, and it's if this was printed out probably on a photo printer using photo paper, it would be. Uh, more impressive but I, I do think that that's that's impressive and, and as an image framed I think that would be very very presentable and certainly nothing to to be ashamed of I'm going to go back to the one picture actually this one taken in Porth Meadow because there I don't know whether you can let me get my pencil here is uh, that's typical of an uncoated lens because the sky must have been quite I don't think it was a particularly sunny day there I think it was quite overcast because I can't see any shadows being cast on the pavement. Uh, but that, that's, that's, that's that sort of glow there. And it gives these photographs, I, I think it just gives them a rather a nice sort of slightly vintage look. And there's, it's difficult to explain really. I, I'm, what I'm going to do as well is that um, not specifically about the Sumar lens, but a lot of these vintage lenses, these uncoated lenses, uh, they 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 can give quite well <laughs> vintage looks. I mean, I, it, it's difficult to explain this, but there is a different look to it, and it's probably down to things like flare and so on. But um, it's not altogether that because I uh, have taken photographs on digital cameras using some of these lenses. And um, I remember taking some at a local open air museum some years back and looking at them. And they, they to me, they reminded me of, and the colours reminded me of the sort of thing that I, I took myself back in the 60s when I was a lot younger. And the, 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 the colours and the, the way the lenses interpreted the image, they reminded me of slides I'd taken on on, uh, on Kodachrome slide film um, and, and you know really I, I can't explain it's difficult to explain it but what I'm going to do at some point is I've recently got a hold of um, a used uh, Sony um, A7 camera the, the the first one the straight A7 and the, re the only reason I bought it was because it was a full frame uh, camera and um, you don't need a full frame camera to take to use vintage lenses I've used my Leica lenses on Panasonic micro four third cameras I've used them on a APS-C camera but I wanted to get a hold of a full frame camera for no other reason than you can then see uh, what the whole lens is seeing so in other words, when you use um, a crop sensor camera, the the camera and the distance from the back of the camera to the, and the size of the, the sensor itself, it effectively magnifies the, the image. So you'll get what's termed a sensor cropping. But with a full frame camera, obviously you don't because the, the sensor is exactly the same size as a, a 35 millimeter frame. So there isn't any uh, cropping. So you can actually look at the edge of the picture and see how the lens performs there. Now, I am not one of these people. I don't go around counting pixels and I don't go around looking down the edge of uh, frames normally to, to see how well the lens is performing. I look at the picture as a whole and think, you know, I like that. Or, no, I don't like that. But it, from the point of view of like trying these old lenses out, it, it's going to be quite interesting. Plus the fact that you're not getting that sort of magnification that you get with uh, using a, a smaller sensor. So at some point, I think I'm, I might print some off that uh, have been taken on the uh, on this uh, A7. Um, I don't think, I have used a few, uh, I think I've used, I, I certainly have used the, a few vintage uh, lenses on, on that Sony be, for the simple reason actually I don't have any modern lenses to fit it. I borrowed a Sony lens or a lens made in for a Sony off somebody else and tried that. Um, that was a new lens. But um, I bought the camera specifically for 
um, using uh, my vintage lenses on. And at the moment, there's um, a Mayer Optic lens sitting on it. Uh, and I did buy a Pentax Takumar lens to put on the camera to use it for general purpose uh, work. But I will be put. I will be using uh, some of my vintage lenses on it. And I've certainly used uh, my vintage lenses on some of the other ca digital cameras I've got. And the, the results can be... Well, like the, the, they are different and, and it, it's just the way these lenses interpret color and i think it's a really very very nice uh, image that can be produced with these lenses they they have a certain atmosphere they remind me as i said of, of some of the stuff i did years back on on um on color slide film but uh, and that's one of the reasons for doing this and uh anyway i'm i'm going to leave it there and um i welcome any comments that you wish to make um, and if you've got any uh, further details about these lenses that you'd like to share with us, uh, please do. The next one I'm going to do will be the uh, the Light Sommitar, which was really a, a development of the uh, from the from the Sumar, and was the second light lens, uh, fast lens at f2. So anyway, thank you all very much, and uh, I'll see you soon. So bye bye for now, and uh, take care.